Happy Monday. Happy Monday, everyone. I wanted to pop in and do this impromptu live today. Um, mainly after celebrating two years of being with Marcus, I decided, especially after just conversations that he and I have had over the weekend, I decided to share some things to maybe um, empower, inspire, help some other people by sharing some things that I've done along the way. And, and hopefully maybe some of the things that I share may, um, like I say, encourage or inspire someone else to think about their own particular journeys. And so I hope everyone is having a great morning so far. I uh, hope you enjoyed your weekend. And if you come back and watch this replay, I'm going to ask that you use the hashtag replay. And if you hear any nuggets, do a hashtag to whatever that nugget may be. If you can do that, I'd appreciate it. I want to share with you five things five particular things I've done. Um, very specifically, um, very intentionally, um, very thought out things that I've done in this relationship very differently. The first thing that I wanna share is having a healthy relationship after having turbulent relationships, after having unhealthy relationships after being with people that I just was not aligned with and that was not aligned with me. None of these people were bad. None of these people were horrible. I wasn't horrible. I wasn't bad. We just did not pay attention to certain things and we were not in a space of emotional wellness to be involved with one another. And so I had to do some work to recognize those things. And so what I'm going to be sharing with you all are, is the work, is what came out of doing that work. And the first thing is self-awareness. So the first thing is, you know, I had to start to become more aware of my actions. I had to become more aware of my part, you know, okay. What are some traits that you may have, Kia, that may contribute to certain things? And so this is like an overall thing for me in any relationship. But I really had to focus on doing that as it pertained to relationships. Because for those that haven't heard, for those who have even heard before, I've been married twice. And so I had to get to a space to understand that the one thing that was consistent throughout this entire time was that I was a party to it. And I think you have to get to a place where you recognize that, you know, it's so easy to point blame. It's so easy to say that it's everybody else's fault. It's so easy to say that they did this to you to become the victim is the simplest thing to do to say that, every man or every woman is horrible to say that you know you deserve all of these things but you are not looking at yourself is problematic and so that was the very first thing that i had to do was become aware i had to become aware of my contributions to the relationships that i had in my life and that self-awareness was key to my healing journey it was key to my growth. It was key to me becoming more self-aware. So when people say to me, come to me and say, Kia, how did you get to a space where you have a healthier relationship with yourself and you have a healthier relationship with Marcus? That's where it came from. Self-awareness. Acknowledging things that I need to correct, things that I need to heal, things that I need to work on. I needed to work on me. Forget what they did, forget how they did it, forget being the victim because none of that matters. I did not want to cycle through life being a victim. I did not want to cycle through life 
pointing the finger at anyone else. What I wanted to do was control me because that's the only person I can control is myself. And so I knew that by becoming more self-aware that more of an awakening was going to happen for me. And so I committed to that. I mean, really committed to that. And one of the ways that I did that was through my journaling. Some of you have heard me talk about journaling quite a bit. It has been extremely powerful to my journey. If you're not journaling, I have a journal a workshop course. Sign up for that course just to kind of see, like, okay, it's, it's a low cost just to see, like, what value does journaling bring to my life? So anyway, if you've just popped in, again, the, the hashtag, if you hear any nuggets, just do a hashtag to whatever that nugget is that you hear. Anything that you hear that helps you, drop a hashtag. Let me know you're in here because I'm sharing some valuable stuff and I'm kind of just sharing my business with y'all because I think it's going to help at least one person. At least one of the five things I'm sharing may help you. So don't just sit here and watch at me. Watch me. Engage with me. Let me know if anything that I say is resonating with you. So that's number one, self-awareness. Number two, I had to extend grace to myself and to anybody else so that I can start to forgive myself for some choices I made and forgive anybody else that I may have held to a high standard or who I was you know, holding resentment towards. Because again, accountability for myself and my actions is going to allow for my self-awareness to get to a place where there is no blame of anybody else. There is no victimization and that I can give myself that grace and I can allow for forgiveness to enter my heart and, and my space. So my energy is of grace and forgiveness, right? Because if, if I give myself grace and forgiveness, energetically, people are going to feel that I will give them grace and forgiveness. Now, this doesn't mean that you could abuse me, but it does mean that I had to pour into myself. I had to give myself those things before I can give that to anyone else. Number three. I would say number three is kind of, <laughs> it can be good and it can be a challenge in my current relationship because I communicate in real time. I am not a person that holds on to stuff. I am not a person that assumes you know how I feel. I am not a person that says, well, he should know this or he should know that that's not how I operate because that's how I used to operate. See, I used to be a person that was very passive aggressive. So I wouldn't say anything, but I would be fuming hot. And I would be like, he should know this and he should know that. And so all of these feelings, all of these thoughts were mine. The other person knew nothing about my feelings. The other person knew nothing about my thoughts. And so whose responsibility is it for... When you want somebody to know how you feel, whose responsibility is it to give them that pertinent information? It's your responsibility. And so instead of being passive aggressive, instead of not being able to use my words, instead of not being able to articulate what I feel, I was being passive aggressive. And so I had to learn, no, you need to communicate. And so I communicate in real time. Marcus is opposite. He's a person that, uh, no big deal. No big deal. So you think. But it happened, it, if it happens two or three times, then it comes up. And that is something that I used to do as well. What happens when you do that is if you're not careful, if you're not careful, he hasn't done that, thankfully. But what can happen is resentment can build. That's why I communicate in real time. If he does something, if he says something, if something is bothering me, I talk about it in real time. The only time that I don't bring something up is if he's about to walk out the door to work because I'm not going to have him go to work with that energy. So I'll wait until he gets off. 
but I speak in real time to him. And although he is non-confrontational, and I'm not confrontational about it, I'm just speaking about what bothers me so that he's not having to guess, so that he's not feeling like this expectation is there that I'm not communicating. It's the adult, mature thing to do. Communicate your feelings, your thoughts, all of that in real time. And so I think that um, in my immature age, in my Im immature time, because immaturity has nothing to do really with age, but in my immature time, I struggled with being able to use my words. And so, and I think like, I'm not even going to go into the history of this, but historically growing up as a Gen Xer and being silenced and not being able to talk and express your feelings create created a slew of passive aggressive people and I was one of them and so nonetheless I recognized that those were my behaviors and I needed to be better equipped to communicate hey this is bothering me I would appreciate I don't have to scream, I don't have to cuss, I don't have to berate him, I don't have to disrespect him. All of things that I used to do in the past. And so, again, I used my journaling as a way to um, be my metric system. Okay, so, okay, these are some things that you used to do, Kia. Now, how can you flip that to do more healthier things? Well, again, as I started out, you have to be more self-aware. You have to understand certain things about yourself. What traits do you have? You're not perfect. You don't have it all together. Your partner is not always the problem. Sometimes it's you. And so you have to take a step back. Not just thinking in your head. You have to write this out. Journal it. You know, I felt overwhelmed today when my partner did X, Y, and Z. I felt overwhelmed when I did X, Y, and Z. This is how you can monitor your growth or your lack of growth. So I won't go on and on about my journaling again, but I mean, I truly believe that that is what catapulted me into a totally different place in my journey. And then number four, number four, I honor him. I honor him. So even if I disagree and we're out in public or even if there's, you know, some type of issue or whatever, I'm not, again, berating him, disrespecting him. I'm always honoring him because why would I choose someone that I can't honor? Why would I be with someone that I can't honor? I, again, another thing from my past, I used to cuss men out. I used to throw things. I used to be physical. That was not honoring a man. And so no figure my relationships in the past didn't work out. I would get so frustrated. And here's what I would say. He pissed me off so bad he made me do this. I used to do that about anybody that pissed me off. They made me do this. They made me do that. Nobody making you do anything. You did it to yourself. You allowed yourself to get worked up and upset. And, and this is the result of that. You know, and so we have to, again, going back to number one, we have to be self-aware to recognize those types of behaviors. Are y'all here with me? I can't even tell y'all here. <laughs> I don't see no comments or nothing. Am I talking to myself? Anyway, honor the person that you're with. Honor them. Otherwise, why are you with a person that you don't honor? That goes for the man or the woman. Honor the person that you're with. Number five. Number five. Number five, I saved for last, but it's really at the top of the list after self-awareness for me. Protect your relationship. When I say protect your relationship, Nobody needs to know what's going on in your house. Nobody. Nobody. You don't need to know what's going on in my household. That goes along with me honoring him. I respect him enough to
to not share what happens in our household. He respects me enough to not share what goes on in our household. If someone asks me a question about him, he's fine, he's good. That's as much as you're going to get. I will not share what happens in my relationship and in my household. Why? Because you need to protect that. You need to protect it. Listen, you can have all kinds of people around you. You can call them friends. You can call them associates. You can call them colleagues. Whatever you want, you have to be careful about how you let people in. You have to be careful about what you share with people. Some people are not there because they want to see you do well. And so protect your relationship at all costs. Everyone de doesn't need to know what's happening in your relationship. I can't tell you how many times I would share my business in previous relationships. And then they would say, y'all still together after that? Ooh, I wouldn't deal with that. I wouldn't tolerate that. And so it's best to keep that sacred at all times. Share it with no one. And so it's important that you value your relationship enough that no one else can say they know what's happening in your household. That no one else can say that, oh, I have a glimpse into their household. I know where there are cracks or flaws because you will not know. And so I hold those things very sacred. And again, self-awareness, grace and forgiveness. I communicate in real time. I honor him and I protect our relationship at all costs. So hopefully that was helpful. Y'all didn't even engage with me today. What's that about? <laughs> That's okay. If you come back and watch the replay, hit hashtag replay. Hit hashtag whatever nuggets you felt like you received in this message. And feel free to reach out to me with questions or comments. Um, and maybe even your own five things that you have found to be helpful in your own relationship. Be sure to, sh be sure to share this out with your people um, and let them know that we are a positive, empowering, inspiring group that just wants to see other couples have beautiful experiences, positive experiences, and be in the company of likewise, like-minded people. All right? Till next time, y'all. Peace.